Hello guys and welcome back to another satisfactory super efficient build guide and today we're going to produce 24 heat sinks per minute in a cozy 11 by 13 grid and thanks does go to Human Imperfect for setting up an excel sheet for this build and you can find the build itself also on our website satisfactorytips.com if you do need any further clarification. Now for this particular build you will need the following resources. 120 bauxite, 120 water, 60 coal, 184 copper ore, and 60 raw quartz, as well as enough resources to build the following. Two refineries, two foundries, eight assemblers, 11 constructors, and eight smelters. Now take note where each resource is entering the build via the colored foundations on the grid. In the second column, we have the coal. In the seventh column, water. In the 8th column, bauxite, ninth column, raw quartz, and finally the copper ore in the 10th column. And this build will also cost a maximum of 284 megawatts to run. To start this build, we will place down the copper smelters first, starting from the center of the 11th column, spanning the middle of the third and fourth row, we shall place the seven smelters against one another. We will then run a manifold of splitters feeding the smelters directly in front, and these smelters will be set to copper ingots, and the smelter in the 11th column will be set to 13.3333% clock speed which will be producing 4 ingots per minute. On the opposite side we will also have to separate the copper ingots into two lines. One which will be of 40 copper ingots and the second part which will be 144 copper ingots. To do this I have placed a splitter in front of the second smelter. This is the second from the left and we have the 10 copper ingots split from this second smelter to the left and merged with the first smelter so that's a total of 40 and we will use these later on. At the same splitter in front of the second smelter we will also take the other two outputs and merge them with the rest of the copper to the right of the build. These will then head to a copper sheet line which we will be working on shortly. We shall now place three constructors for the raw quartz to be produced into silica. Place the first constructor facing the left of the build in the third row of the fifth column and place two more constructors directly above this. These will be set to silica with one of the constructors set to 25 silica per minute which is a total underclock of 66.66 six seven percent again these will then be fed by a manifold and the conveyor should run flush against the smelter manifold line the silica will then be merged with more silica from a refinery which we shall be placing next so the refineries here we need to place two refineries the first refinery shall be placed facing the left of the build and placed over the middle of the first and second row in the third to fifth column this refinery will be set to alumina solution and fed with the bauxite and 120 water. It will need 180 water to run fully, but we will recycle the water we've got from the alumina scrap refinery that we will be placing next. So in front of the refinery liquid input, place a junction and a valve to stop backflow from the water extractor. And we will then place a second liquid pipe along the front side of the build and this will also have a valve facing towards the pipe joint that we've just placed. Make sure that the silica output is then merged with the previous silica line and the alumina solution will then be directly run into the second refinery which we shall now be placing. Now this refinery will be placed facing the top of the build spanning the second column at the start of the second row. This will be set to aluminium scrap and we will then run the water output back around to the water pipe at the front of the build that we just placed. This will then want to be fed with the alumina solution along with the coal from the second column. 
This should then be set to 50% clock speed and the scrap will head to the aluminium ingot foundries which we shall be placing next. So at this point you've guessed it, we'll be placing two foundries. Now these will be set to aluminium ingots and run at 100% clock speed. Place these in the second column facing the left of the build, spanning the fifth and sixth row as well as the seventh row. These will be fed by the silica which we have merged in the third row as well as the aluminium scrap that we've just started producing. Make sure to merge these two foundries together and run this line up to the 10th row. Now at this point we will need to place four assemblers from the second and third column in the 12th row across to the right. Here we will have a little more space to play around with in this layout. So should you wish you can keep it compact or you can separate it more like mine. Uh, we will then need to run two manifolds, one of which will have the aluminium ingots and the second one will have the copper ingots which we will take from the first and second smelter we placed earlier which has 40 copper ingots on it. Now I run the conveyor as close to the quartz constructors as possible and then up under the foundry's manifold line. These assemblers will all be set to 100% clock speed and be merged together to be taken to the final assembler line which we will place soon. First however we will place the copper sheet line. So returning back to the smelter area we're now going to be looking at the second line of copper ingots that were from the smelters. We will run these into a constructor line to produce copper sheets. So next we will place down four constructors facing the bottom of the build in the seventh row spanning the fourth and fifth column along to the seventh and eighth column. We will also need to place another four constructors parallel to these in the ninth row facing the top of the build. In between we will build a manifold line and feed this with the copper ingots and these should all be set to 100% clock speed and we will run the copper sheets along to the top of the build in front of the top right constructor. For the last part of this build we will place four more assemblers facing the right of the layout. These will all be set to heat sinks with one assembler set to 20% clock speed. Build a two tier manifold running alclad aluminium sheets as well as the copper sheets that we've just been producing. Merge these assemblers together and run this to a storage unit and you will be providing at full capacity 24 heat sinks per minute and these will no doubt be used later on in your factory for things like the cooling systems. And I should note that this total build won't require anything any greater belts than the Mark 3s. So though it's pretty compact at times and you do have to balance out the water and the copper uh, lines, it's an actually pretty easy build to do, pretty simple altogether. So there you are guys, I hope you found this build helpful. Uh, if so, please do hit the thumbs up and obviously if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe. And special thanks does go out to our Solar Eclipse patrons, The Calamity and Cerebral Tag, as well as our Lunar Eclipse patrons, Dixie Chris and James Irwin, as well as our Blood Moon of today, which is Slom. Anyway guys, until next time, as always, ciao for now.